this juncture call on Brothers Island. I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. Brothers Island, who will do the obituary. Well done and thank you. Not many people get it right. Well done. Good morning to one of the greatest families to ever walk the face of this earth. I have the great honor today <clears throat> to do the eulogy for my granny. It's an honor, but it's also a tremendous task. And if I'm honest, it's something that's been keeping me up at night. Because where do you even begin to find the words to describe someone who was short like me and short in stature, but was a giant in our community? That's what Ma was. The first thing I want to say today is today is a celebration of a life. Ma would have hated seeing only sad and somber faces all day. When I think of Ma, for me the number one thing you think about is being a rock that made everyone feel at home. Case in point, Keith. Keith, you've probably, Keith Plikes, you've probably forgotten by now that you aren't actually a blood relative of ours. But Ma took you in so long ago, you became a son so long ago, you are a blood relative of ours now. And that was Ma's gift. I remember during the school holidays when I'd stay over in Shorter, we'd play cards till late into the night. And when everyone would be tired of playing cards with me, I just wanted to carry on. Ma would stay with me, up with me till two o'clock in the morning, playing and drinking tea. Because that is the love she had for her grandchildren. <clears throat> in the early days, I remember, Celestine, you brought some strange Germans home from a faraway land. We did not know these people, we didn't have, know their culture, but they instantly became family in our home. When Ma went on to be with Jesus, the first thing my wife said was, she made me feel so welcome in the family the moment I walked through the door. I remember at our wedding, we got married in Hogsback in the forest and it was raining in the mud. And when he decided last minute that she wasn't going to wear shoes, Ma flipped out. She was like, can someone get that girl some shoes, please? My in-laws, they used to run a hotel. They used to own a hotel in Hogsback, so they know catering and they know food. Until today, they are still talking about Ma's curry beans that she cooked at the wedding. They can't stop talking about it. Martella, last week when Ma passed away, your parents in Czech cried for the whole night. They don't speak a word of English, but the last 12 years they've had Christmas in Shorda and you do not need words to experience love. Celestine and Aline, I hope you've got some uh, counseling sessions planned for the Bangladeshis across the road. They're going to need it. I think we're starting to see a common thread here. It's not the beautiful face brick house that looks nicer than all the other surroundings or the beautiful tiles or the always clean house that made 98 Jan Hofmeyer a unique home like no other. It is one common denominator. And that was Ma Winnie. Proverbs 17 verse 6 says, When you live in a way that makes your children proud, you provide a legacy of character and faith. I'd just like to read some words that the family shared to show you that legacy that my granny left behind. The first is from Aunt Shireen, Uncle Keith, and the Bliff Note family. You said, Our Heavenly Father gave us unto Winnie. Oh, what a lovely gift. Long will the impact that she had on our lives prevail. Ours is to replicate the good lessons that she taught us in our lives and in our children's lives. And by doing so, we shall ensure that she goes with us into the future. Stag Mitchell said, When I heard of my mom's passing, I went straight from Dower College to Auntie Winnie's house to find solace and comfort in a warm embrace. And of course, I got served dinner that night. Kivan, I know today is a very difficult day for you. I really like what you said on Facebook. 25 years ago, you laid your husband, Adam Fanake, to rest. 10 years ago, you held your grandson in your arms, Adam Fanake. I vow to honor you through your grandson and raise him in the same spirit that you raised and loved me. Lauren, I don't know why you had to write this. You've been making me cry for 24 hours since you sent this to me. Every time I read it, I'm going to try my best here. 
So Vicky Castro will in her. GMO, I don't know where to start. I don't even know what to say. I'm full with immense heartache. Never would I have thought that I'd be writing this tribute to you today. Ma, you were extraordinary. No words can ever be enough to describe the grandmother you were. I love this line. You truly were the greatest to ever do it. We were your pride and joy. You literally would do anything for us and you went above and beyond till the very end. You embodied a spirit of community. You always showed great compassion and care to those around you that I had the privilege of witnessing every day. For my 24 years thus far on earth, you were a part of my daily life and I genuinely wish I knew how to do this and carry on without you. But your last words to me were, be strong, Lauren, and that's what I will take to my utmost. Brinty and the kids wrote, Dear Ma, although we spent many days and years together, I still selfishly feel that it was not enough. I had the greatest privilege of caring for you in the last weeks of your life, and it has now become my most cherished time with you. You are many things to many people, but for my children and I, you were a source of secure and resolute affection. And this is the line I really love, because this is Mark. You were mother and friend to many, yet you managed to make each one of us feel unique and special. You epitomized the meaning of grandmother and great-grandmother. In your presence, we knew we were loved and appreciated. You were the rare kind, and I will endeavor to emulate your tenacity, your positivity, but most of all, your love for your fellow man. I celebrate your life, knowing that nothing was left unsaid and undone. Your last call to me and your final moments on this earth is the honor of my life, and I thank God for the privilege to say our goodbyes and a privilege that has been denied to many. You will remain forever dear to me and hold a special place in my heart. The last one is from Lee. I am forever grateful that my last gift to you was an act of service, an opportunity to do for you what you've always did for all of us. I am immensely grateful that my daughter got to meet you and experience the love that only you could give. The lessons you taught, the kindness you showed us, and memories you've made will be with us forever. We can only but thank God for our greatest blessing, our beloved grandmother. And while none of us are ready to let go, God felt that you had fulfilled your purpose on this earth, which I believe was to show love to all. A special kind of love, a grandmother's love. The hurt you feel when you say that you are going to Ma's house now is overwhelming because Ma is no longer there. But once you are at Ma's house, the hurt and emptiness disappears because though you are no longer with us, your tender love and giving spirit still remains. Legacy, as Proverbs says. Matthew, I'm just going to ask you to get ready. Um, Matthew's going to play us a hymn as part of the end of the eulogy, um, but before he starts, by the way, what did Ma think of your hair and, and Lawton's hair? I remember when I, you're not going to believe this now, but when I finished school, I grew this afro, and Ma hated that thing. She wanted to cut it the moment I walked through the doors. She didn't know it was the last time I'd have the ability to do that. Today we're going to lay my granny to rest with Adam Fanek, her husband. She survived 25 years after him. I remember when Adam died, Ma was broken. But she picked herself up for another 25 years and left an incredible legacy. Carol, Gavin, Eric, Trevor, Celestine, Helene, Randall. Your mother was small, but she was a giant. God bless us all.
Well, so First Peter 1, 3, 9 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for us, who by God's power are guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which, through perishable, which though perishable is tested by fire, may redound, may redound to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Christ Jesus. Without having seen him, you love him, Though you do not know, now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. As the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your soul. And then the, the words printed, the psalm printed on the leaflet, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in pastures green. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Beloved, I have chosen also to share with you uh, most particularly the epistle from, uh, from the Apostle Paul to the 1 Corinthians, as we can read, the 13th chapter. The heading is The Way of Love. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophecies, powers, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. For love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. It is not arrogant or rude. Love, is, love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believe all things, hope all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spake like a child, thought like a child, reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. 
This is the word of the Lord. May God bless the reading of his word and indeed us all who receive it. Amen. Loved in Christ, we will now in preparation of the sermon sing together. I would have, lo- I would have loved to, uh, to have another item played there, but nonetheless we will do that some other time. We sing the first and the last verse of When Peace Like a River. Attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my Lord thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. The first and the last verse. May the congregation rise. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord thou hast taught me. Dearly beloved, gathered here this morning in the sanctuary, allow me to take a moment to convey my heartfelt condolences to Carol, Kevin, Derek, Trevor, Celestine, Randall, Eileen and their spouses and their children. 
as you journey through the grief of your mother and grandmother's death. This prayer is the prayer of my heart that Almighty God will strengthen you and that His presence, you will sense it throughout this time and in the days and in the years to come. Be assured of my support and my prayers as you journey through this time. I realize, beloved in Christ, that I caught to me that the family faces at this time, surrounded by the church and community of friends and indeed loved ones. And so on behalf of myself, my family, and the leadership of the Vase Memorial Church, we pray that God will comfort you through the Holy Spirit, but also that this great cloud of witnesses of family and of friends locally and abroad will not disappear from your world after today, but will continue to drop in, to send that email, perhaps arrange for a Zoom gathering, make a phone call, or even bring by a plate of eats, as they did this past week. Dear friends, I have chosen this this Corinthian reading for reflection today, as I hope and I know that all of us were able to even hear Zylan as he was speaking, undergirded was this theme, love. Beloved, I hear love listening to her children when they speak about her when they speak about their relationship and her relationship with them, when they share with me about her relationship with her Lord, when they share with me about her relationship with her late husband, but also the community at large. And so, beloved in Christ, I am sure of that love listening to friends and congregation members sharing with me about the life of dear Aunt Uni. And also, child and a friend, the dear Reverend McCabe. And I honor your presence here today, Reverend McCabe. And that for me also is proof of a genuine love that she had. That there could be such a great bond even with Reverend McCabe, who, is, who also served her as minister. Beloved in Christ, I see love when I notice the way that family, the way that church folk and neighbors alike enter the family home in Jan Hofmeyer Road to offer condolences. I feel love even when even the Bangladeshians express, as Ellen has said, their sincere appreciation for the immense way that Marwini impacted their lives. Beloved in Christ, I experience love when upon my arrival and meeting Bruce and Carol, I was accepted and made part of this, your family. I don't know who will cook the curried beans now. Bruce. And so, dear family, this day, as we've gathered here, it's really a celebration. It's really a coronation service, if you like, of a brave, of a staunch, of a strict, of a God-fearing, a never die iron woman. Woman who never grew weary of doing good, even when you, the recipient, felt undeserving. Beloved, and so what am I saying when speaking of this Easter throne? I am saying, looking and hearing about her character and life 
I begin to understand and reading this text, there is power in love. Love picked her up when she was down. Love propelled her and energized her in her maternal duties, even those moments when her husband was not around and even beyond when he passed. It was love, beloved in Christ, that oozed from her, that even the passerby could drink from and enjoy, and especially during Christmas times. You know, she did not believe in small measures. And just enough. No, she was a woman of plenty. And her being vested in the word meant that she was able to uplift the spirit of those who were down when they came into her presence. Dear friends, there's power in love. Power to uplift you and liberate you, yes, when nothing else seemed to work. There's power in love to show me and you the way that we should live. The Song of Solomon says, set me as a seal upon your heart. A seal on your arm for love, he says, is stronger than death. Now, beloved in Christ, the power of love is demonstrated by the fact that this morning we came together, we are all here, yes, when Ma Winnie spoke, you listened. And today she called us all together here, perhaps yet for a final lesson. And here we are. We showed up. Dear friends, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth on one occasion was asked by a lawyer to sum up the essence of the teachings of Moses. And he went back and reached back into the Hebrew scriptures to Deuteronomy, Leviticus, and, and he said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor. As you love yourself. And then in Matthew's version he added. On these two. Love of God and love of neighbor. Hangs all the law of the prophets. Everything that Moses wrote. Everything in the holy prophets. Everything in the scriptures. Everything that God has been trying to tell the world. Love God. Love your neighbors. And while we are at it. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. Dear friends, just like Jesus did to us, we are mandated, beloved in Christ, to live out that love that we have received in the person of Christ Jesus. And in so doing, to begin to change not only the people's lives around us, but begin to allow this immense and great love of God to transform our own very being. I'm sure you agree with me that this world that we're living in needs love desperately. I'm talking, beloved in Christ, about real love. Real power. Power to change the world. Because something in this world that we're living in is very wrong. Listen, dear friends. The Israelites sang spiritual songs. And they did so in the midst of their captivity. One of these songs says there is balm in Gilead. A healing balm. Something that can make all things right. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded. To make the wounded whole. There is balm in Gilead to heal even the sick, sin-sick soul. And one of the stanzas actually explains why they said, if you cannot preach like Peter, and if you cannot pray like Paul, you just tell the love of Jesus how he died to save us all. 
Oh, beloved in Christ, that is the balm of Gilead. This is the way of love. This is the way that all of us should be living. Living a way of love. Loving in love and living out love. Jesus didn't die for anything that he could get out of it. Jesus did not die. He did not get an honorary doctorate for dying. He didn't. Beloved, he wasn't getting anything out of it. He gave up his life. He sacrificed. He laid down his life for the good of others. For the good of you. For the good of me. For the well-being of the world. Brothers and sisters. Van Eck family. Family of dear Ma Winnie. Both on South African soil. And the family following this service online. That is what love is. Love is not selfish. Love is not self-centered. Love is sacrificial. And in so doing, becomes redemptive. And that way, beloved in Christ, of unselfish, of sacrificial and redemptive love, changes lives. It can change mine and your circumstance. It can change your family. It can change your family life. It can change whatever circumstance it may be that you are facing. Yes, that way of life and love can change this world in which we find ourselves. If you don't believe me, just stop and for a little while imagine a world where love reigns. Imagine, beloved in Christ, our families and our homes where love is the way. Imagine neighborhoods and communities where love is the way. Imagine Shorder. Imagine Corston. Imagine the northern areas. Imagine Port Elizabeth. Where love is the way. Imagine governments and nations where love is the way. Imagine business and commerce where love is the way. Imagine this tired old world where love is the way. Yes, dear friends, when love is the way, unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive love. When love is the way, beloved in Christ, then no child will go to bed hungry in this world ever again. When love is the way, then there will be justice. And innocent girls and boys will not have to die from violence or stray bullets from gangs or even the police. When love is the way, corruption will cease. And poverty will become history. And this earth will become a sanctuary. When love is the way, beloved, we will lay down our swords and our shields down by the riverside to study war no more. Because when love is the way, there will be no viciousness and murder and we will treat each other irrespective of language irrespective of color, like Ma Winnie did in her very own neighborhood, like everybody is actually family. When love is the way, we know that God is the source of us all. And we are all of us pink, blue. We are all brothers and sisters. We are all children of God. My brothers and sisters, that is a new heaven. That is a disease-free new earth. A new world, a new South Africa, a new Port Elizabeth, a new Shoreville. A divorceless, 
a life of divorceless marriage, a hateless community, a supportive and caring society, and a new human family. Wonderful things come from Jana of Meyerau. Dr. Martin Luther King was right when he said we must discover love, the redemptive power of love. And when we do that, we will make of this old world indeed a new world. In closure, to Sister Winnie's children and grandchildren, God so loved you that he blessed you with such a loving and caring person whose body you lay to rest today. May you, as a family, live lives worthy of God, worthy of the love that you have indeed received from Mawini. And may God hold you and indeed us all in those almighty hands of love, today and for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, may we bow our heads in prayer, and I invite to the front Reverend McCabe, just to give God thanks and pray for the family. Reverend McCabe, can come. Baie dankie, Heerwaarde, vir die prachtige boodskap, en dankie vir die familie, vir die kans wat hulle my gee om ook hier te wees vandag. Uh, maar ek wil ook die kans gebruik om my namens die vrou en my familie, ons medelee te betuig met die familie van die kinders en betakkinge van die familie van Ma Winnie. Mag die Heere julle versterk en ek denk die boodskap was so gepas uh, vandag. Kom ons bid saam. Heere, seder het inderdaad geval. En wanneer seders val, dan heel die strijke. En die slag wordt van ver gehoor. Selfs buiten die grense van ons land en ons stad. Ek dank je Heere vir Mawinise lewe, En dankie, Heere, vir die inpak op ons allemaalse levens. Ons dankie vir die mens, wie sy was, klein in die postuur, maar groot in, in die hart. En sy is inderdaad, soos Basalem 1, sy boom geplant, langs waterstrome. Een wonderlijke vrug het sy voortgebring, binnen en buiten sy soon, onder alle omstandighede, maar sy het ook een skadie, geoffer aan die reisiger wat moe geraak het, die vreemdeling sonder een plek, die hongeriges is sy gevoed en sy het meer as kos gegee, sy het liefde, erbarming en vrede gegee. Ek sien nog in my geestes oog die glimlachende gesig van hierdie mens wat net in haar hart plek het vir almal, nie net haar kinders wat aan haar gesoog het nie, maar so ook ons, Heere wat by haar levenspad voorbij kon kom, en so baie van haar kon leer, dankie dat ons haar kon ken, dankie Heere vir die, vir die aroma van liefde, wat uit haar gekom het, en jou aangetas het, en jou opgerig het, en jou sterk gemaakt het, en jou in een richting geplaas het, wat jy nie geweet het, jy kon gaan he. Heer, hy sê, was ons allemaal sin. Ja, sê, ervan was van ek, maar dit kon net so wel my keip ook gewees het. Dankie, Heer, dat ek weet, 
Jy het nou Arno kom haal, want haar levenspad was lang, maar dit was een vruchtevolle lewe. Heren, ek bid dat haar siel in vrede mag ris, en sy nou aangekom by die plek, heren, wat haar nooit pijn meer sal wees nie, nooit teleerstelling sal wees nie, nooit liefdeloos het sal wees nie, en soos die woord so gepas gekom het, waar daar, heren, tydloosheid is aan liefde, wat liefde, jyre, nie sel by dit het nie, boe en verder as die graf. Ek bid nou, vader, dat ek jy met die kinder so wees, ek het pas vir hulle gesê, op die stoep, hulle is nou net so arm soos ek, want wanneer jy jou moeder verloor, dan het jy alles verloor, jy kan al die geld in die wereld het, en as hulle nie daar is nie, dan is daar niks, Een moederloose huis is een lee huis, want hulle is immers hier, soos Mawini, hulle is onze, onze salfpotte, en onze broodblikke, is hulle wat hier, wanneer jy seer krij, as aan die salf nood, nabie is die steek hy, haar seer, haar mond, haar vinger in haar mond, en tas die beseerde area aan, en skielik is dit weg, Dank die vader vir die inpak van moeders. Een miljoen moenies le hier vandag voor ons in die kus. Dank die heren dat ons weet, ons begrawe nie haar legacy nie. Ons begrawe nie haar opvoeding nie. Want die dood is soos een stik in die beesem. Die dood vee nooit, vee altyd half. Achterna bly daar nog steeds iets oor van die persoon. Ons weet dat sy nou huis toe gegaan het, na die plek van liefde, waar liefde heers, waar liefde die, die, die wetgever is. Sê in haar siel, jyre, haar lieflike, prachtige siel, mag dit in vrede is. Sê in die woord, sê in die kneg, en sê in jyre sy lewe en sy bediening. Ons dank jy jyre, dat jy hom so kon gebruik, maar gebrek om meer so in die toekomst en vir altyd. In Jesus naam. Amen. Dank u meneer. May the congregation rise as we sing together the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> Oh uh-huh. 
You may be seated, beloved in Christ, as we um, invite to the front Russell, who will do the vote of thanks. Morning. Um, yeah, I've been tasked with giving the vote of thanks. Um, if I had to thank everybody that gave messages, flowers, just said hello and stuff, we're going to be here until next week, so I'm going to just edit it a little bit. Firstly, I would like to thank God for having blessed us with Mark and having shared her life with us. Reverend, to thank your family, um, West Memorial Church. Thank you for, for the time spent for the family to experience Mark through us. Thank you for ministering the words of comfort and encouragement. Uh, the ward leadership members who encouraged or inquired about Mark's well-being. Thank you very much. It, it means a whole lot to the family. Um, Reverend McCabe and family, it's been ages since I've seen you. Part of a part of family already. Um, there also wishes from uh, Reverend Theo Williams. I thank him in, in his absence. Um, the organist very Um I didn't recognize him with his back facing, but when I turned around, I'm not going to embarrass him with what his, his nickname was, but thank you for blessing us with your his beautiful renditions. Um, to Apostle Neville and Pastor Roger and the broader Beniza International family for trusting, for trusting God with Mars' well-being, including the 6 a.m. live streaming, which I didn't know she woke up that early, actually. Um, the prayers made it so much easier for us to cope with Mars' transition. Um, to Pastor Gosher Memli and the SKK, um, it was just a, a phone call or a WhatsApp and prayer groups were um, organized and it, again, it made just so much easier. It means everything to, to the family. Um, Mr. Cecil Caldbloom and the staff of Prestige. Um, it, it wasn't just an undertaker, it became personal. It, sorry, I, I've not met you. So, um, it, it means a whole lot to the family. It made it so much easier than it could have been. Um, to Jerome and David, Ad Hoc Productions, again, thank you so much for your professional work and um, you know, in this day and age we having two notes all around the world these days, it just it makes it so much easier for everybody. Uh, to the schools that adopted Ma and vice versa, DJ Lowe, um, Hanky Secondary, um, St. Teresa's, who just passed, um, thank you for your continued support. Officer Aidan Yon, Thank you for organizing the traffic. Um, we don't want to single out anybody, but just for, but for all those who took time to spend hours keeping my company while we were at work, um, we sacrificed their families to make time for Ma. Thank you. She had so many adopted children, and so many boyfriends too. Um, thank you for, for the time and spending it with her. It, it made it so much of a difference to me. Um, the neighbors and the community of Shaw at large, who never allowed us to worry about Ma, Ma's friends who became family in South Africa, from Bang the Bangladeshis who spoiled her with luxuries, the Czech family, um, people from Australia, Abu Dhabi and the UK. Um, thank you. You've all played a pivotal part in keeping Ma young at heart, whether it be for calls, food, or just a greeting on the strip. Um, last but not least, Ma's children, the grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren. Um, we want to say thank you for never making her feel lonely, making her feel loved and appreciated. Ma was the glue that, that bound us all together. It will be tough going to 98, but seeing a small pig in the kitchen. All that we can do is keep a legacy alive by living the, the life she lived, spreading love and kindness. Now, as I finish, I just want to digress. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, I'm not going to single people out, but I would be remiss if I didn't thank any. You know, part-time travel agent, part-time tax practitioner, teacher, mother, auntie, she's there from the beginning. She was master out there. Really, I thank you. So, she was all. And with that, I appreciate the bottom from my heart. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. May the congregation stand for the death march.
death match. die Seen van die Heere, verdag en vrede. Die Heere sal die Seen en die behoed, die Heere sal sy aangezicht oor die laat skyn en die genade wees, die Heere sal sy aangezicht oor die vrijf en aan die vrede geer, weet ons, dat genade, vrede en liefde, dat God die Vader, Seen en Heilige Geest, sal met elkeen van ons rus en met ons bly, maar om besonders met die bedroefde familie, hier vandaan en tot in alle eeuwigheid. Amen. Beloved in Christ, I now call upon those responsible, the pallbearers, um, Russell, Julie, Gibbon, Van Eck, Zylan, Van Eck, Garth, Matthew, Lenton, Denzel, and Kieran to come to the front as we prepare to um, and their leadership will walk in front.
as much as our dear sister has departed out of this life, we now commit their body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, <coughs> dust to dust. We do so in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life for our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. Merciful God, our Heavenly Father, you who made your Son Christ to be the resurrection and the life, raise us, we pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may with this, our dear sister, be found acceptable to you for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Father of all, we pray for those whom we love but see no longer. Grind them your peace, let light the virtual shine upon them, and in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will through Jesus Christ. Holy Father, grant us in all our duties, your help in all our perplexities, your guidance all our dangers your protection and in all our sorrows your peace heavenly father even as the family lord will prepare to depart from this place may not their thoughts linger here but heavenly father look into the world with new assurance and hope that heavenly father if they look forward in hope they will not disappoint their mother but rather love in honor and gratitude for what she has implanted and instilled in their life bless them as they face the future. Heavenly Father, with all that they've been taught, may they live a life of love. For this we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide us all, now and forevermore. Amen.